Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets regular, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the All right, Jim, Sean, can you hear me? Go ahead and sound to the colors and let's raise the flag to the top. It takes a while to bring this 150 foot flag up in the air, but it's a beautiful scene against that backdrop. It will be Lord as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. Thomas, where are you here? Thomas and Lily. Thomas and Lily Patino, one is six years old and the other is three years old, is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. She's going to lead us, everyone. All right, let's go. All I pledge right, pled allegiance to the flag, flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, that was so good. Thank you. Okay, fine. Our colors will leave now. Posted.
please remain standing. Ms. Parsons, would you come forth? Let's see if I'll try to get this one better to speak to you if I can. You push one of the little doodads. Hello, hello, hello. Push a doodad. Now, there you go. Which one do we push? It is working now. Please, you want to be standing? Hello? No, Here it's you not go. going. Is it going now? No, I'll use the handheld. Thank you, Colonel. Give me two, give me. Right here. There we go. Welcome and God bless Colonel and Mrs. Plummer, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let us remember those who served and are currently serving in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guards, and Reserve Units on this Memorial Day 2016. Let us not forget those who have gone before us and those who have yet to come with the highest regard to the 1 million, 1.3 million men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice with their lives in all wars and conflicts. Let us not forget the MIAs which have still yet to come home. Please keep them in your hearts and their faith burning bright for them as we pray that they return home soon. This being said, I'd like to share with you a small prayer from out of the NSDAR Ritual and Missile Book for Memorial. And you may sit at this time. <coughs> Excuse me. Eternal God, we stand before you, deeply grateful for our inheritance of courage and valor. We thank you for those ancestors who are willing to defend us in our rights and to the freedom we now enjoy. Help us to emulate their dedication and to remember their heritage as we pass it to our future generations. May we use their strength and fortitude to protect the freedoms and support of our nation. Amen. Now, if you'll please bow your head and join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and lead us not into t as we forget those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory. Amen. Many thanks, and may God continue to bless you, each and every one of you, and the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barton. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This, lady, this lady really supports us. Can you hear us all right? Okay, great. We're going to ask our mayor of McAllen, who is also a Vietnam veteran, a, a fabulous mayor. This city has supported us since 1988 in this endeavor we have out here. They've always been in our corner, backing us, and making sure that we have it with these young men and that are helping us out here set up. So we're very blessed to have the city of McAllen, and we're very blessed to have this, I hate to say it, good-looking mayor. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Colonel. Welcome, everyone. Um, you know, today is my privilege to be here on the solemn day of remembrance and patriotism. This is a day we honor the American heroes that gave their lives for the freedom we enjoy today, as they have the Americans that have enjoyed the freedoms throughout our history. As a nation that was founded on the principle of freedom, many of our forefathers sacrificed their lives for that freedom. This is what that magnificent memorial symbolizes, the freedom of our country and the price that so many had to pay to preserve it. You know, all veterans gave up something. The heroes we recognize at this magnificent and hallowed grounds paid for their freedom with their lives. But what does that you know, really mean? What was the impact of that sacrifice to the individual serviceman and his loved ones? They gave up their youth, of course, and all the opportunities of our great country. They, go, they gave up the love, loves of their lives, known or potential. The responsibilities and all the richness of parenthood, the opportunity of watching their sons and daughters grow from childhood into adulthood, <laughs> the pride of a parent at graduation, and the once-in-a-lifetime feeling of giving away daughters at marriages. The average age of the American heroes who have laid down their lives for our freedom is about 23 years, uh, depending on um, where you look. And by giving their lives, they gave up their future. And for those in the audience and those who, who aren't here today, 
but who have participated in our Memorial Day ceremonies, having lost a husband, a father, a wife, a mother, or a son or daughter, I want to say that your sacrifice is real every day and not just a loss of a potential. We all realize that Americans should be thankful and recognize your sacrifice and recognize the heroes you lost, not just on Memorial Day each year, but each and every day as when you awaken with the recognition of your personal loss, we ought to be thankful for that. You know, uh, this is a real memorial, and today we uh, are honoring another Valley uh, hero who's lost his life this last year in defense of our country, um, uh, Mr. Cinco, um, and we'll be honoring him later on today. I want to say a word why these brave men and women who are memorial is on this day in a special place and all around our country who gave up their lives and that is for a single purpose, and that's freedom. I believe that is, that was their belief, that they believed in the best country in the world, a country of the free and the home of the brave, a country no matter who you were or under what circumstances you were born, that you could do whatever you wanted to accomplish with hard work and perseverance. I believe that they also believe that their country was a country where you could say or do whatever you wanted with freedom not known in the whole world. They believed that their country needed them and they were called on to serve. But make no mistake, just as these brave men, as I speak of today, who have given their life to our country and felt that they had the duty to the blessed, their blessed USA, our politicians who send our young generation to war have a duty. They have a duty to safeguard that American dream. They have a duty to only send our young men and women to protect the truly American interest in our way of life. For those Americans we recognize and honor today gave their lives for the freedom we cherish and believe in the American way of life, no more or less. So please, God, instill that same sense of courage and belief in our leaders today and tomorrow so that they will always remember that they serve in their political positions with the same sense of duties and patriotism as those we honor today. So may God bless the families and friends of those we honor today and my brothers with me today and all our veterans who have served, and God bless America, the America we know and love. Thank you. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't thank some people. You know, the city parks and recreation, see all the guys in the blue shirts around here? They, they come out on their holiday each year, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and put up the, all the uh, amenities that we have today and work their, their days, so it's very important. Um, we're not ready for that one, though. No. That's like in four minutes, so you can sit down. <laughs> and so, that's a secret. I'm gonna do a little magic show later on. Uh, you know, our police and fire color guard, they come out on their days off and do a great job this, uh, uh, posting the colors in the uh, 21 gun salute. Um, Steven Lopez, McAllen's own version of The Voice, who always comes out in a fantastic job. And of course, Jim Sean with, with the uh, flag. And so we have a lot of uh, moving parts to this great event and we thank you for being here. Um, we hope you enjoy it. We hope that we remember the spirit we don't go out and shop afterwards. We remember this, this is a solemn day to remember all those that gave their lives for our country. Thank you very much. Uh, later on, I'll come back and give you the real lowdown on him. <laughs> we want to introduce, we have some guests here. We'd like to introduce everyone, but just for the, some of our guests here, we do want to uh, introduce, and we'll ask Jan Hartzog to come forward. She is a board member of our committee here. Jan? Good morning. Welcome to the memorial. Uh, quick question, is this the first visit for anybody that's here? All right, okay. Well, feel free, I know it's a hot day, but feel free to look around and check out the entire memorial because it is really an awesome place, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, I'd like to recognize all of the veterans in the audience, either stand or raise your hand, please. We have a lot. <laughs> This is always a very important part for me to recognize the veterans. I come from a long line of military people and, and I really, really appreciate the sacrifice. I appreciate your service, so thank you for your service. Um, I see we have the last patrol here and we also, the, this time we have a uh, motorcycle group of veterans. I talked to one of the guys, they're called the Sand Devils Motorcycle Club 
So I'd like to welcome them here also. And then we have a very special World War II veteran back here behind us. Um, he's 97 years old. As long as I have been involved with the memorial, which is quite a while now, Mr. Kramer has missed one program that I know of. And he is right back here. I want to acknowledge Mr. Kramer. Now I'm going to turn it over to a fellow board member here, Wally Cavazos. My voice is giving out. My allergies are really flared up with all this wind and dust and stuff in the air. So thank you again for being here today. Thank you. And I'd like to go ahead and say something along with Jan was stating a while ago. Uh, about a week ago, I had two friends down from Houston. And I said, I want to take you over to the memorial. I said, you won't believe this place. This is awesome. Took them out here. One of them was a, uh, a lawyer. The other one was an entertainer. But uh, at the end of about the first 10 or 15 minutes, they turned around and said, Wally, they said, why don't we know about this place in Houston? This is incredible. So the word has to spread. We've got one of the most incredible monuments here, memorials in the state of Texas. All right, a few more introductions. We have a gentleman here by the name of Captain Paul Allen, U.S. Navy retired, served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. You can wave your hand, please. You now we also have our distinguished Senator Juan Hinojosa. He was also a Marine, Vietnam veteran. I, he may have some things that he wants to say to you this morning. Sir? Very short speech. <laughs> All right, now we also have State Representative Bobby Guerra, District 41. I think he did want to say a couple of words too. God bless all of you for being here. God bless all of our veterans and for those who they gave the ultimate sacrifice to our nation. And again, thank you for being here. Thank you very much. And we'd like to get our mayor back up here. We have a nice little gift we'd like to give to him on, the, on behalf of the Veterans Board. Before we do this, I'd like to ask Senator Hina Hosa to come forward, please. I didn't know he was going to be here today. I had thought he was out of town. But uh, you're going to have to stand back. i got to get the mayor first. Oh, no, Colonel. You take the senator first. Between these two, I'm always in trouble. But I, but I wanted to save both of them. I'm just joking. They are both Marines. I can't hold that against them. I think about it often. But, you know, Marines are here to stay, so we have to be very careful what we say. But the key thing here is, you know, we could never have built this memorial if we had not had support of these two gentlemen here. They have been in our corner ever since day one. He prepared the contract for us and helped us every step of the way we've been through here. Both of these men are considered by all of us as being the head of our committee for building this memorial. Realize we started in 1988. Without their help, we absolutely could not have done that. I'll say state right now. The city has helped us. Like just right now, uh, Senator Hina Hosa and Mayor Jim Darling have ramrodded for us a $500,000 grant. Imagine that. We will be <laughs> We would have never been able to do that. Now we have the opportunity to finish where you are. This stands where you sit will be sitting on special bricks with holes in them and grass growing through it. We will be able to bring up our, some of our disabled people up here to the stands. We will also be able to put in the back here 36 panels of granite with stories written by children. We're going to engrave those on the wall, and we will take the residue of those stories 
set them into a website that should be before we're finished in the, finished in the years to come, thousands of short historical moments in history written by these children that will be available to all the schools throughout the nation. This is a fantastic project. These two gentlemen were able to float this for us and obtain this money. So we were building between 1916, late 1916, 2016, <laughs> is that right? Uh, and 17. So we hopefully will be able to do it. The 1916s are three histories of World War I. You've got to see them over here. Uh, we just finished up. Jump off right quick on it. We have the ashes of the last World War I veteran in front of the center wall of the World War I history over there, the last one in the RGV, Merrill. So you will be able to see that. We'll be adding approximately 21 more bricks there shortly. But without, the, without their assistance, and the committee we've been working with all these years, and all the people have made this possible throughout the RGV. This is an RGV project, not just McAllen, even though they have shouldered the biggest part of the burden here. This is something for all of us that you all have participated in. We have over 7,000 pavers out here with people's names. Any of you who have not entered your name or want to put it down someplace, it's not restricted to veterans. It was built for all people. We have hundreds of school children's names out here. Leave your history here because it will be standing. Today we're standing 241 years after the war started and the Revolutionary War of April the 18th, 1775. 241 years ago. Now we're standing here looking back at our ancestors and putting their history out here. And imagine 241 years from now, your history will be here for your children's children to see. And we're telling it what it was uh, as we look at history and freedom from this era. So please do it. The, the bricks are $25. It cost us $25 to put them in here. But you know why we're doing it is we're holding your history. That's what we're looking for here. Anyway, on behalf of all of us, uh, and we will, I, we have one hat. I didn't think you were going to be a left. That's okay. I got but I, do, I know you. Get, <laughs> we made this hat without a Marine emblem on it. So we're going to get back at you. Would you step forward then? Thank you. Sir. This is a hat. Uh, it's not much. It's just a token of our thanks for what he has done. You know, for $500,000, we're going to give another hat, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just very proud to be an American. I'm so grateful to live in this country. Uh, I'm very grateful to all of you, uh, all our brothers and sisters, uh, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, friends and neighbors who have fought for our country to fight for our freedom and way of life. People sometimes forget that our country is under constant danger uh, from evil forces, evil countries that want to destroy our way of life, want to destroy our family and our freedoms. But not, not, but not for the courage of our American soldier. We wouldn't be here today expressing our thoughts and being grateful to the sacrifice they made for our freedom and our families. Uh, and I'm just happy to uh, be a friend of <coughs> Colonel Plummer. Uh, he's been a great leader, has taken the bull by the horns, and made this happen a reality. He has worked tirelessly, tirelessly trying to get the community involved, the state involved, everybody involved. And to that, Colonel Plummer, we're very grateful, not only for your service to the country, but your continuing service to this community. What a great Marine. I, I always like to go out with Chewy. I'm always I'm pretty secure. If I get in a fight, I'm going to be able to kick somebody's butt. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this great memorial um, it didn't start with, it started with a dream, I think. And it started with a dream of uh, one person, but they had a committee. And I want to talk about the committee. And we're going to do a little presentation so you can come out here. OK. You know, it came out the committee of uh, Wally Cavazos, Jan Herzog, Dr. Chapa, Santiago Cromo, uh, Beto Rodriguez, Eddie Callahan, Kim Callahan, and Jesse Rodriguez. They were the people. I don't know how many of you guys are here today, but if, here. if you could all stand and give them a applause, because they're the people that built this memorial. Yeah. 
But as, as all our veterans know, every platoon needs a leader. And we have a leader in that, and that's Colonel Plummer. And, and over the 20 years I've gotten to know him, he's really been an inspiration to me. He's kind of been a pain in the butt sometimes, a little bit of everything, but he really got this done. And um, I just tell one short story. Uh, he, uh, he thought, you know, I was in the Air Force, and he thought, well, you know, Air Force and the Navy and Army did the stuff on the ground. But um, he said to me, uh, uh, you flew in Vietnam? I said, yes, sir. And he said, you're not afraid of heights? And I said, no, sir. And he said, we're going to go climb the Spire of Honor over there. And I said, OK. And he said, I've already done it, so you're going to do it now. <laughs> I have no verification of him doing it, but uh, if you get in there, you got to crawl on the bottom. And it's just a ladder. It's a metal ladder, no safety guards or anything. And, so he was sitting on the bottom telling me war stories, and I was climbing, I was trying to concentrate, and I couldn't concentrate, so he, he couldn't see me anymore. I said, you're at the top, and I said, yes, sir. But I'm gonna I'm a make a confession. I only made it two-thirds up, and I came down, so that's, um, someday I'll be able to do that. But the colonel's been the leader of this. He really has been the guy who's out there every day, uh, out here, um, that's how I, I saw him, uh, cutting grass and all those kind of things. He really has been the inspiration of the group They've done a fantastic job. And you know, it's unusual when you have um, two heroes at the same time here. And I'm talking about people who fought in World War II, in Korea, and Vietnam. We have two of those today. And we introduced the um, Admiral on, on one and Colonel Plummer on the, as the other person. And that's a, you know, it's so unique and so important. There's less than 2,000 of those heroes left in our country. And so it's great, it's my opportunity to honor uh, Colonel Plummer. So I'm gonna have, what you're gonna do is they're gonna take off this, uh, the drape here, and I want you all to recite what it says on there, okay? So we're gonna do that. Neil, ready? Well, I'm gonna pull it off. Ready? And I want you all to recite what it says on here, okay? And the street in front of the memorial from now on will be named Colonel Plummer Drive. Congratulations, Colonel. Boy, did he get back at me. I've been hiding my name all this time. I, I don't even wear her name out when I go. That's, that's flabbergasted. But you know, it should. I wish we could name all of this committee. You realize it's taken absolutely everybody in the Rio Grande Valley to make this possible. One man can't do it. It's all of us that made this possible. You attending here, our dream is to have children aware of the history of our forefathers. That's all this whole thing is about. It was designed as on the concept of a teacher schoolroom. You know, you go in there and she's got all types of information aboard. It's so vital that the children understand from you who have the experience that freedom must be protected. It cost us 18,000 lives to get it, to create it, to gain it from the British. And since then, we have lost 1.3 million American men and women military Guardian, not counting all the grief and anguish and the families torn apart, it's been a horrific cost for us to sit out here today. Now remember, they are our leaders tomorrow. And remember, patriotism, which is one of our biggest factors driving the protection of this, is not something that comes in the genes. It must be learned. If the kids are not learning it, our nation will fail. History has shown that nations change back and forth constantly. To maintain this, we need a vital source of information with the cutback in history now and teachers being political science. We don't have history teachers anymore. You do. You're the people. I see mothers and fathers out here bringing the children. It brings tears to my eyes to see them reading to the children these stories. So please make sure that you bring the children. The schools come out here. This is what it was designed for as an outdoor schoolroom. It must be taught by teachers or parents. It will not succeed if it doesn't. Today's children, you can, you can make today's children, they will follow you. But that's what we're here for. So anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm, he, he's getting back at me, I, I'm afraid, on this one. Because I want to tell you the true story. He was climbing up that ladder in the center of the damn thing. He couldn't see anything going on. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He was scrambling up like a monkey, and I kept shouting, 
Mayor, I'm down here. I'll catch you. Don't worry. Don't worry. You don't have your belt. And I was running around down. I could see the mayor getting killed climbing up that thing, and here I am. And then I thought, I'm right below him. He'll squish me. And so I debated whether I was going to catch him or pull the hand away at the last second. Finally, I got him to stop. I think he heard me crying down there, little tears coming out. I promised he'd go up later, and I'd get him a belt. So he says he went up. I'm not sure. I know that I was holding my eyes closed. <laughs> anyway, I thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Senator Hina Hosa. You're very nice. Thank you. thank you. On behalf of our committee, I haven't they haven't approved this yet, Mayor, so we'll have to see if the committee approves it. I thank you. Well, we'll move on today. Thank you very much, fellas. I really want to say our committee has helped us. As you notice, half of our committee are non veterans. This is, this is the veterans just sponsored this place. Half of our people are non-veterans. Okay, let's see here. Uh, oh, we've been waiting for him. We got the keynote speaker coming in now, Gene Gutierrez. Would you come up, Gene? I started to just give you off Gene Gutierrez. He's well known. He's an educator in McAllen. <coughs> he even taught some of my children. He is a fantastic soldier. And let me read this, Gene. I don't want to leave anything out because he's got quite a history here. He started back in 1941, just as he came out of high school in August. That's before the war started, as you know. He stayed in through 1945, had some great experiences. He served in the first special services, precursor of this, of the ones we have, the Green Berets. It was consisted of Canadian and American soldiers, a great experiment. They were most well known because of the attack in Italy during World War II. Imagine trying to break into Rome. They were stalled on this mountain chain. The Germans had fortified it, and we were trying to stop it. And here this mount sets right above the main road going into Rome. They couldn't get into Rome. They were trying everything possible. And they have the artillery spotters up there dropping the artillery on our troops as we moved and stopping our attacks. Our troops were having to attack up mountains. The special services had been trained very tough. They were brought in to do this. In the middle of the night, they scaled the mountain peak using ropes. They had been trained in this. Now, it's colder than hell. They can barely, they can, it's really freezing weather. They crawled to the top. They could hear the Germans talking, but they couldn't go over because they couldn't control the top. And the, off the Germans had heard them. They would look, and they were hanging on the side of the mountain with the ropes. They, they were there for 12 hours, the cold, freezing rain, hanging there, not making any sound, and listening to the German, and as they say, smelling the food they were cooking. Finally, at daylight, they broke over fought the Germans, made them retreat, seized that peak, which opened the road to Rome. It was a fantastic, a fantastic battle. Well, they're finally recognized here not long ago. This particular exploit was recognized by the United States government, and the gold medal, a congressional gold medal award was awarded to that unit. And it was Gene and one Canadian were selected to receive that. He went to Washington, D.C. and received this gold medal award for on behalf of his unit. He is a, a fine soldier, a fine educator, and a person I like to call a friend, and a real damn good soldier. Gene? Good morning, my fellow Americans. Good it's great to be an American and to be in one of the most sacred places, I believe, right here in this beautiful memorial, which to me is a state of the art. I have seen many, many memorials throughout the world. But believe me, this is the top of the line. Colonel Plummer and his committees really went all out with the help of a lot of people from the city and other private citizens who made great contributions. So uh, 
I would like to uh, let you know that it is a great honor to be here with each one of you to commemorate and celebrate together the most important day of our country, Memorial Day holiday. Today marks 150 years when we remember those who cor courageously gave their lives for us, the living. To those who have fought and those who are fighting, we admire your courage and dedication in keeping America the land of the free and the home of the brave. Memorial Day originally was called Decoration Day. This is a day of remembrance for those who have died in the service of the United States of America. Waterloo, New York was officially declared the birthplace of Memorial Day by President Johnson on May 1966. Memorial Day was born out of it, the Civil War and a desire to honor our dead. It was officially proclaimed on May 5, 1868 by General Logan, National Commander of the Grand Army of the Republic. In his General Order 11, the 30th of May, 1868, he designated for the purpose of placing flowers or otherwise, otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion, and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet, churchyard in the land. The date of Decoration Day, as, as it, he called it, was chosen because it wasn't the anniversary of any particular battle. On the first Decoration Day, General James Garfield speech at Arlington Cemetery, and 5,000 participants decorated the graves of the 20,000 Union and Confederate soldiers buried there. Since the first shot was fired on April 19, 1775, the beginning of our quest for independence and freedom, 1.3 million men and women have given their lives to safeguard America's freedom and to keep all glory waving proudly. To them, we owe our utmost respect, dedication, and love. For more than 241 years, our military has provided a bastion against our enemies. In that time, our world has changed and our forces have changed with it. But the valor, the dignity, and the courage of our men and women in uniform remain the same. From Valley Forge to the present, some 83 wars and assorted military actions have taken place. Whenever any American in uniform is killed by hostile enemy action, it is meaningful, and that loss must be remembered and forever recognized. The founders of the United States understood that the military would be rampart from which America <clears throat> would guard its freedom. George Washington once stated, by keeping up in peace a well-regulated and disciplined militia, we shall take the fairest and the best method to preserve for a long time to come the happiness, dignity, and independence of our country. The prophecy of these words has been fulfilled time and again. During World War II, when the nurses on Corregidor stayed to tend to the wounded, they knew that facing them was inevitable hardship and possible death. They would be captured, imprisoned, starved, conceivably tortured or killed. They never faltered. No one from General MacArthur, from MacArthur down questioned their right to stay behind. They were soldiers. That was a mission. At the end of the war, they were freed from the prison camps, and indeed many of them had died. They were warriors and heroes. They were also women. On May 2, 1968, an Army 12-man Special Force team was inserted into the jungle west of Loc Nhe, Vietnam. They met heavy resistance <coughs> from the enemy. Three times, helicopters attempted to land and bring the team out. 
but each time they were driven off. A staff sergeant monitoring the operation from the unit's base station volunteered to return with another helicopter and try again. He realized all the team members were wounded or dead, so he jumped from the aircraft to assist the injured. Then the pilot was killed and his helicopter crashed. The staff sergeant called for help. When the next aircraft arrived, the soldier carried the wounded and led to the helicopter. He was wounded himself over seven times, but he saved lives of eight men that day. His name was Roy Benavides, a Texan from Cisco. And this rescue was done on May 2nd, 1968. An Army helicopter crashed in the middle of a dense maze of shacks and chantlers in Mogadishu, Somalia. A growing number of enemy troops were closing in on the site where four critically wounded soldiers were trapped in the wreckage. Master Sergeant Gordon and Sergeant First Class Shuhart volunteered to go to the aid of their fallen comrades. Subjected to intense fire from automatic weapons and rocket-propelled grenades, they fought their way through the narrow streets to the crash site. They stayed and fought until their ammunition was exhausted. After Sergeant Shuhart was killed, Mr. Sergeant Gordon took a, the rifle from the debris, handed it to an injured pilot, wished him good luck, and continued to, continue to fight until he himself was fatally wounded. This courageous men and women, each so different in heritage and background, shared the common bonds of the armed forces, duty and sacrifice. All of them reach a moment in their lives when race and religion, creed and color, made no difference. What remained was its essence of America, the fighting spirit of a proud, valorous people. They are soldiers who paid the price for freedom. As we remember these brave warriors and their comrades in arms on this Memorial Day, we must look to the future as well as the past. In, in today's world, freedom comes concealed in uncertainty. America still relies on her sons and daughters to defend her liberty. The cost of independence remains high, but we are willing to pay it. We do not pay it gladly, but we pay it with deep reverence and thanks to those who have sacrificed their lives for America. We know that in the years to come, more brave souls will, souls will certify their lives for America. As it was mentioned by a colonel that I was a member of the first special service force, the beginning of the present day Green Berets, which was a highly specialized unit of 2,400 men. We lost 740 killed in action and over 2,000 uh, wounded. In my, in my platoon, I lost seven of my best friends. We include them in our thoughts and prayers today. Memorial Day, for most, it is a three-day weekend filled with barbecues and picnics, a time to get away from the normal humdrum of the week. For, for others, it's the beginning of summer, a time to look towards the long, lazy days and a time to play your summer getaways. Though for some, Memorial Day holds a special significance. Memorial Day for all soldiers is embodied in the words of the author that you take when you enlist in the service of our country. I'm sure what I will read in here will be very familiar to every military man because this is the oath that we take. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear the true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice, so help me God. This oath 
taken by each and every soldier exemplifies the reason why soldiers do what they do each and every day. Soldiers are the defenders of the same principles that made our country great. They stand as patriots to defend and protect the ideals and sentiments espoused in the Constitution of the United States. Soldiers bear true faith and allegiance to that document, and they work and live within the code of military justice. Soldiers also obey the orders of the president and the officers appointed over them. These truths are self-evident in the everyday lives of soldiers. Now, as we see our fellow citizens arrive back from foreign land, we should not forget those words that each and every soldier spoke upon enlistment. Because we look upon a returning soldier with, from conflict, a disabled veteran, or a gray marker, these words should ring your conscience. Remember those that gave their lives so that we may continue to live in freedom as spelled out in the Constitution of the U.S. and the Declaration of Independence. Least forget. We have a national moment of remembrance and at this time of unprecedented success and prosperity throughout our land. I ask that all Americans come together to recognize how fortunate we are to live in freedom and to observe a universal national monument of remembrance, a moment of remembrance on each Memorial Day. This memorial observance, observance represents a simple and unifying way to commemorate our history and honor the struggle to protect our freedom. The National Moment of Remembrance Resolution was passed December 2000, which asked that at 3 p.m. local time for all Americans to pause for one minute. And I hope we all keep that in mind. At 3 p.m. this afternoon, think about the lives of this, that this country has lost, 1.3 million. And say a prayer for the repose of their souls to voluntarily and informally observe in this way a moment of remembran re remembrance and respect pausing from whatever they're doing for a moment of justice. I have a few notes here that I uh, would like to continue. Um, as you heard a few comments made about Colonel Palmer's uh, participation in this, this Veterans War Memorial of Texas is the most perfect setting to honor and pay tribute to our military men and women who have given the ultimate sacrifice for their country, their lives, to protect the living and future generations from tyranny and oppression of others. The importance of this memorial is to impart the history of our country to the present and future generations of our country that freedom is not free. Colonel Plummer, where are you? You and your committees, the school children from elementary through high school, the countless contributors in the city of McAllen have done a superb masterpiece job in the construction of this beautiful and magnificent Texas Veterans War Memorial. Thank you, Colonel Plummer, for all your efforts and the 10 plus years of dedicated perseverance to have the top of the line and the most impressive Veterans Memorial in the USA, right here in McAllen. I would like to uh, close by uh, uh, reading to you this beautiful prayer that was uh, found on the body of a dead soldier on Anzio on or about May 23, 1944. Look, God, I have never spoken to you, but now I want to say, how do you do? You see, God, they told me you didn't exist, and like a fool, I believe all this. Last night from a shell hole, I saw your sky and figured then that they had told me a lie. Had I taken time to see things you made, I'd have known they weren't calling a spade a spade. 
I wonder, God, if you shake my hand. Somehow I feel you will understand. Funny, I had to come to see your face. Well, I guess there isn't much more to say, but I'm sure glad, God, you met, I met you today. I guess zero hour will soon be here, but I'm not afraid since I know you are near. There is a signal, I've got to go. I like you a lot, I want you to know. Look now, this will be a horrible fight. Who knows, I may come to your house tonight. Though I wasn't friendly to you before, I wonder, God, if you wait at the door. Look, I'm crying, me shedding tears. I wish I had known you this many years. Well, I have to go now, God, goodbye. Strange, since I met you, I'm not afraid to die. This prayer, as I mentioned, was found on the body of an American soldier who was killed during the offensive to, to liberate Rome. This prayer brought many memories of my days in action. When I left my home to join the army, my mother gave me her rosary. I clearly remember my first war encounter. I took out my rosary and started to pray. As time went by, I wore out my mother's present, and by the end of war, I had already worn out two additional rosaries. And guess what? Yes, God answered my prayers. God has delivered and made the immortal souls of all men killed in battle May they rest in peace. God bless America, and it's been a pleasure to have been here with you. Thank you. That was fine. Uh, you know, we, we owe a great deal to people like Gene. Please be seated. I'm sorry we're a little bit over time tonight, today. We're going to move on. Thank you, Gene Gutierrez. You're a fine soldier. The kind words he said about me, I reiterate, it's impossible to build a place like this without everyone we have. We have thousands of people that's responsible for this, but thank you for the kind words. We've got something now. We're going to take a little break while you're fanning. I'm sure appreciate all the people. We've still got a couple of seats here that people could move over out of the sun. But we have a visiting artist, artist today visiting us. And he is going to talk about George Washington. We recently dedicated this statue you see over here of George Washington. We have his history beneath it. We don't put anything out here that doesn't have a story with it. Well, this, this visiting artist had a few comments about it. Let's see here. Mr. Patino, are you here? No, here he is. This is Mr. Jacob Tino. He's nine years old. He was in the second grade, but now you can see that he's probably in the third grade going to it. Mr. Patino, tell us what tell us about this. What 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 happened? Um, good morning. My name is Jacob Patino, but today I am George Washington, standing beside my statue placed here by you, the Texas Society Daughters of the American Revolution in your Plaza of Liberty. Did you notice a long black walking stick I'm holding? It was bequeathed to me by my dear friend and revolutionary hero, Benjamin Franklin. He sure was proud of it. The story about me is at the base of the statue. I hope you like it. <clears throat> I was born in 1732 in Waterbridge, Virginia, and I started my military service in 1754 during the French and Indian Wars. I was 26 years old when I returned home to Mount Vernon in 1758. Things began to heat up though I wooed and pursued the beautiful Martha Danridge Kudis. 
She was a widow with two children. We were married in January of 1759, and we spent the next 40 years together until I died in 1799. During the next few years, tensions and incidents continued to increase between Great Britain's king, our ruler, and the 13 American colonies. Finally, in April of 1775, the colonist rebels fired their first shots against the British soldiers. Our Continental Congress appointed me General and Commander-in-Chief of our Army in June of 1775. We fought the British for about eight and a half years. The last major battle was fought in Yorktown, Virginia on October 1781. The British forces surrendered to me. We finally signed the treaty with the British in 1783. At last, we were free from the British, a free people with an independent nation. We eventually achieved our U.S. Constitution in 1788, and you know, I was elected first president of the United States in 1789. Then I was elected second time in 1792. What an honor to serve my country in both war and peace. I finished my second term and returned home with Martha to Mount Vernon. We had three more years together until I died in 1799. What a wondrous marriage in life I had, and now this beautiful statue. You have made it possible for me to stand far to the future with your daughters and their daughters' daughters as guardians of the precious gifts of freedom and liberty. This plaza of liberty and its library of history will shine as a beacon of hope and resolve for centuries. I and your daughters will guard and protect far into the future your cherished dream of freedom and liberty. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this, we brought him at great expense to this today. We wanted you to meet him. Mr. Patino here is delightful. You realize he is our future. All of our children are like that. I think we have a chance that we have more. Thank you, Jacob. Okay, that, that was delightful. I just love this young man. He and his family are all so patriotic. Uh, t Thomas was out here a minute ago with Lily. Lydia steps right off the plate. Thomas is very good. He also says things like this. Uh, we're not going to have just a moment here. Of, uh, we're going to, one of our soldiers not recently died, uh, and we always honor them. Eventually, we'll put his, put his picture and his service over here on a wall on the other side. But right now, we want to spend a couple of seconds to just remember him. But I'd like for Stephen Lopez, would you come up and make the presentation, please? I will now read the citation for Staff Sergeant Michael A. Cinco. Born January 8, 1987, U.S. Air Force. Air Force Office of Special Investigations, 11th Field Investigation Squadron, San Antonio, Randolph, Texas. Killed in action, December 21st, 2015. Bagram Air Base, Afghanistan. Operation Freedom's Sentinel. Staff Sergeant Michael Cinco was killed along with five other soldiers when an attacker drove a motorcycle laden with explosives into their patrol near Bagram Air Base. During his time of service, Sergeant Michael A. Sinkle earned the Bronze Star, Purple Heart, Air Force Combat Action Medal, 
Air Force Good Conduct Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, Global War on Terrorism Medal, Air Force Overseas Ribbon, Air Force Longevity Award, Small Arms Expert Markmanship Ribbon, and the Air Force Training Ribbon. Thank you, Stephen. Stephen is one of those children we talked about, too. He started with us when he was 11 years old singing. He's really something. He is our future also. I'd like to give a hand to him. <laughs> also, I want you to know <clears throat> that Gene Gutierrez is with his wife is celebrating his 65th, isn't it, Gene? 65th? 65 years of marriage. Our hat's off to his wife. <laughs> okay, now we're going into the latter part of this, and thank you for your perseverance in this heat weather. We really, really do appreciate you being here, truly. And we're going to go into a moment of silence. Now this moment of silence, as Gene mentioned in here, it was when they started to remember all of those who had died in the war. At that time, it was the Yankees. but. They were also at the southern cemeteries. And so they ended up, the wives got together and said, hey, let's clean off their tombs, do uh, their, their plots too. And that's how we started Memorial Day. And that's what we want you to do today, if you will. Remember your loved ones. Remember those who made possible the freedom we enjoy today and those who made possible the protection, which is now the most key part that we have. So moment there and then we'll start our ceremony. If you would rise, please. Just trying to be a father, raise a daughter and a son, be a lover to their mother, everything to everyone. Up and at him bright and early, I'm all business in my suit. Yeah, I'm dressed up for success, from my head down to my boots. I don't do it for the money, there's bills that I can't pay. I don't do it for the glory, I just do it anyway, providing for our futures, my responsibility. Yeah, I'm real good under pressure, being all that I can be, and I can't call in sick on Mondays when the weekend's been too strong. I just work straight through the holidays, sometimes all night long. You can bet that I stand ready When the wolf growls at the door hey, I'm solid, hey, I'm steady hey, I'm true down to the core And I will always do my duty No matter what the price I've counted up the cost I know the sacrifice When I don't want to die for you But if dying's ask of me I'll bear that cross with honor Cause freedom don't come free I'm an American soldier An American Beside my brothers and my sisters I will proudly take a stand When liberty's in jeopardy I will always do what's right I'm out here on the front lines Sleeping peace and night American soldier I'm an American soldier 
an American soldier in America beside my brothers and my sisters I will proudly take a stand when liberty is in jeopardy our lives do what's right I'm out here on the front lines sleeping peace at night American soldier I'm an American In America, What a beautiful voice. We're now going to have the taps. Uh, Sergeant Bailly is going to, from the police department, will now present the taps. I mean, uh, the firing squad. If you behind you, if you hear some shots going off, don't blink. Jump. <laughs> Would you, military, please salute? All your arms. Dr. Richard Chapa now will come forward and lead us in the benediction. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. There's so many things that we're grateful for. Many of our speakers have mentioned a few of the things that we're grateful for. Your creation is wonderful. We need to take care of it. We need to protect each other. We want to thank you for all the people who participated in this, this Memorial Day. As we try to keep in mind all our young men and women who have sacrificed their lives to keep our country free, that we may protect the values that we cherish, that, that they are in conjunction with your will we ask that you take us home safely. And thank you for all the wonderful people that will show up here today. We ask, we thank you for them and thank you for all. And we ask for these things in your name. Amen. Uh, please be seated for just a moment. Uh, we left out some of our nurse veterans here today and other veterans, uh, and also several of you here I've seen in the audience. I'm sorry we not, could not introduce all of you, but just by your presence today, we have succeeded in trying to teach the principles of freedom and liberty. We want to thank you. We're going to end right now. I'm sorry you had to be the heat. That's why we started at 9 o'clock this morning, trying to beat the heat. Well, thank you very much for attending, and have a wonderful day. <laughs>